was a lifesaver, a life changer. Been one of the happiest things in my life. Looking at myself, never wanted to look at myself. I've always run away. I was at the end of the road, and broken, and I had nowhere else to go. Been an emotional journey, on deep. Really has been hard to have a look at me and my behaviour. I want to better myself now, and bettering myself, I feel will better the people around me's life as well. Always run away when, when things have got on top of me, um, and it's been one of the most freeing things that I've done. It's been emotional, um, but rewarding at the same time. It's a lifesaver for me. Um, run out of options, run out of places to go. Um, yeah, deep saved my life. Um, deep to me, it's uh, I found it quite emotional. It was one of the most important parts of my life, in all honesty. So I was down a, a very unforgiving road, if, you, if, if I can say. It was, more, it was deep, deep. It really was a lifesaver for me. It changed the way I thought about everything. Made me look at, um, made me look at me, which is something I've never done all my life. I've run away from me. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done as well. Though. It's one of the most difficult things I've ever done. And I won't lie to you and tell you that it was nice, because it wasn't. It was horrible. You know, I don't like going to the places that I had to go in deep. But it is, it's a lifesaver. Yeah, grief letters, you know, I found that hard to do. My grandfather um, passed away, um, like a dad to me. Um, he passed away, God bless him. I'm just writing that letter to him to say I'm sorry for the way I was. Um, yeah. Miss him. But the letter to my daughter, um, I had to do a bedside vigil where I was dying and what I'd say to her on my deathbed. Apologising, um, for not being there, even when I thought I was. I was always these, oh, I'd, I'll die for my daughter. But I couldn't live for her. I remember a counsellor once saying to me that um, unless I came through the other side, that my daughter would be sat in the same chair as I'm sat in now. And I never really got that. But I got it that day. I just couldn't stop it, you know. I was still using drugs while we were in hospital. Taking drugs in with me and, you know, and still using. And that haunts me today. I just wish he were here so I could hold him and say I'm sorry. A letter that my wife um, wrote to me that I actually read out in group. Um, and I can tell you this, it was the hardest thing that I've ever had to read out in my life. It took ages to read. And to see it from my wife's point of view, even my, my children's point of view, uh, was a big turning point for me. My family suffered, um, my wife suffered, and my mum suffered in the past. And it's just seeing that point of view, it brings it home, it brought it home to me big time, like a you know, a, a freight train coming towards me. It was a big realisation, that was. Uh, I was just sexually assaulted, sexually abused, and being able to accept that it wasn't my fault, um, 
to always held that blame that it was my fault. Um, I, I felt dirty, unworthy, unloved. Um, when the counsellor said to me, I've got two camps I can sit in, I've got a, I can sit in the survivor's camp or I can sit in the victim camp, and I've always played victim around it. Um, and being learning not, not to play victim and sit in a survivor's camp, and that's probably one of the most significant parts. For me, the most significant part of Deep was a sense of family. Never really had that sense of family before. You know, I didn't care about anyone apart from me. Because I felt like nobody cared about me. So why should I care about everyone else? And then uh, James, my counsellor, he, he told me, looked me in the eyes and he said, I'll be there for you. I'm not going anywhere. You know, and it, uh, I started crying. Because I could tell he was telling the truth. People showing me love in order for, and then it was able, I was able then to show them love. And everybody around me that's not in recovery, like my girlfriend, my little boy, I was able to show them how much I do care. And one of the most growth that I've got from it was being able to share my stuff, the deepest, darkest secrets, one of the most shameful stuff that I've got up to in that room. I know that it stayed in there. The road I was headed down, it, it turned me right around, gave me a U-turn of life, and I went down the other road, and it was a nice feeling. Because uh, when you when you get people pointing, pointing out the changes that they see in you, it's really nice, really nice. One of the best feelings I've ever had. Bit full of fear, full of anxiety. Uh, I never really connected properly with my emotions. Um, being able to cry in front of a room full of men, I've never done that before. And uh, that, that preconception before that I had, everyone's going to take the piss out of me, um, all going to laugh at me, it didn't, it wasn't the case. Getting vulnerable, you know, letting people into my life, not pushing them away. They got to know the real me, and I got to know the real me quite a lot of violence when I was growing up. Um, but I'm not that person no more. I'm ashamed of what I've done. It's revisiting your uh, life. Of, um, you you realise the points of where you went wrong, um, what brought you to addiction. The most important pieces of work to me was doing my life story, which opened a lot of doors for me in my life to things that I thought I'd never look into. The positive thinking and negative thinking as well, exercise, which uh, broke me, it did. It did, it broke me, it made me realise that I listen to the negative voices in my head 10 times more than I listen to the positive voices. It's sometimes like the positive voices were rightly there. It's helped me massively. Um... It's made me more confident. It's helped me with my self-esteem. It's helped me build relationships. Deep shown me um, a path that I thought never existed. Um, it's helped me understand myself and others. It also introduced me back to to God, if you will, and my faith, which is something that I thought I'd lost a long time ago. It's given me an inner strength, it's given me self-worth, it's given me confidence, and it's given me that ability to believe that, you know, all right, I've made mistakes, and some of them were big mistakes, but it doesn't mean that my life has to stop. I had to sit down and look at me, you know, the people who have hurt me, mum, my grandfather's not here, my children. You know, it's not about me no more. It's about my family now. This time round, it's helped me now with the realisation um, of the hurt I've, I've put people through, the devastation um, that people have had to go through because of my addiction. Um, it's helped me realise that um, I can never drink again. 
It's helped me to accept a lot of things that have gone on in my life as well. It's helped me accept the fact that some things that have happened hasn't been my fault. No. But it's also helped me accept the fact that I have to take responsibility for the things that were my fault. The fact that facing your problems you get inner peace and that inner peace is the most best feeling that I've ever had. Not a drink or drug can buy that feeling. Getting my life back is a change. Um, being able to walk walk down the street and not be isolated, if you will. Not being on my own. Before I came on deep, um, I was homeless. I was on the streets. Injecting drugs, drinking. Um, I didn't like the person who I were. Um, I just had enough. I'd had enough of taking drugs and drinking. Just being on my own, isolated, no one around me. It was a dark place, it was horrible. And I wanted to change. Just uh, giving back to the community, uh, giving back to people rather than taking all the time. You know, and that's what I was doing in active addiction. I was taking, I really do not want to run from responsibility. Because that's what I've been doing for most of my life, is any bit of responsibility I run, I shirk responsibility. And I know I have to face responsibility now because if, it'll make me feel better, it'll make me stronger as a person as well. I understand that I, I'm being a good dad now being that person I'm not, I was always meant to be. But I feel really good that I am making changes for the positive instead of what I need. I'm looking at I'm looking at the bigger picture as well. But what I need also is what my family needs and what my little boy needs to grow, what my girlfriend needs to grow and what I need to grow and what we all need to grow together, don't we? So yeah, it makes me feel really good, really good. I blamed myself because I couldn't defend myself. Um, and I felt weak. And I've learned it's not my fault and I don't have to play, play victim. I'm a human being. I've got feelings. And yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right with that today. I'm not, I'm not as selfish as I thought I was. I want to help people, especially younger kids. I've learned that, uh, that I am, I have more power over my thoughts and my actions than I ever thought I did. Currently, I'm doing voluntary work for Acorn, and that was one of my main goals: was to come back and do some work and co-facilitating ramp. And uh, I, I get a lot from it. When I give back, I feel good, and I feel like I'm, I've done something. I've served a purpose. I've already started um, doing bits, volunteering um, for a, a homeless unit that saved my life, gave me a roof over my head, gave me a second chance. So I do a bit of work there just to say thank you. But today I've got opportunities in my life now. You know, I can't change my past, but I've got a future, I've got a life now. I want now to be a good father and, and play with my children on a clear head, out of the madness, without planning drinking, and enjoying their fun, and enjoying my fun. I want to be able to play with my children and enjoy it as a father should. I want my little boy to be proud of me, more than anything. I want him to be proud of his dad. And, uh, and again, I'd like to say a big massive thank you to James. I want to thank people for not giving up on me and not and giving me that second chance. Paul, caretaker, Carl, Steve, Dougie, Kirsty, Adam, they've all helped in that, that little, little way that made the whole difference. And James, yeah. I owe him all my life. Andrew Toto, um, thank you so much. You, you saved my life. 
I want to walk the walk. Really, I want to uh, prove to myself that I can do this, that I can stay um, abstinent, and I can, you know, I can not drink again. I feel for my family. I feel for my mum. I feel for my, for my children. I feel for my wife. I feel for everybody that's been dragged into my addiction. Uh, I want to thank Michael for coming to my house all them months ago. Uh, I want to thank John and Dougie for giving me as much time as they did on ramp. That really helped me. Uh, I want to thank my girlfriend as well. She stuck by me every step of the way. I just want to make things better now. I, enough's enough.